So in this video, we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at the TT RGB Plus software. A long story short, it can be a little unintuitive at times, as a lot of the RGB software can be. So hopefully this will just give you an overview of what TT RGB Plus is all about, how to get it installed, how to get started with it, and some of the little nuances that I have found with it. The first thing you want to do is get it installed, and you can install that from Thermaltake's website. Just do a search for TT RGB Plus 2.0 and it will take you right to the website. And we'll just navigate all the way down to the bottom. So once it's downloaded, it's like any other file. You're just gonna right click it, extract all, and just extract it to the default location. It's a very simple piece of software to get installed. And once it extracts, go ahead and just double click the setup application. All right, and like most of them, I'm just going to accept all of the defaults and let it install. And once it's completed, you can go ahead and run the software. Now there is also a piece of software out there from Thermaltake called the Neon Maker. Now that's a software where you can make some of your own animations and things like that. That'll be for a different video. Maybe we'll take a look at that in the future. Uh, but you don't need that software in order to run TTRGB+. Once TTRGB+, is installed, go ahead and run the application. Now you will be greeted at this screen here, which is going to be at the Connect tab. So let's talk about the layout of this screen. So basically across the top you have Connect, My PC, and Lighting. And again, if yours differs a little bit, just use this as a guide. But uh, you're going to start on the Connect screen. This is where you're going to be able to configure the basic controllers that you have. And so right underneath that is kind of the sub tabs and the first one is controller. Now you can see here the two controllers that I have connected. I'm going to go ahead and just reset it. We talked about in a previous video, but I'll talk about it briefly again. Uh, Thermal takes controllers have some dip switches on the bottom of them. You do need to just differentiate between the two of them or three or however many you have. Uh, just make sure each one is unique and that number, that identifying number is up here in the right hand corner. So I've got controller number one and controller number two. Controller one here is for the SWA fans and controller number two is for the quad ring fans that I've got installed. The idea here is to A, number one, identify that you have the right controllers here and you may see other devices here as well. But with these two, you have to set up what devices are connected to these controllers and on what port. Now we can go ahead and do a scan and it may go ahead and detect a little bit about what devices are sitting out there. But I think this is kind of pulled from the configuration that I had previously because I don't actually have this case. Uh, that was a device I was playing with. So let's go ahead and reset it. Okay, and if it doesn't match up, you can kind of reconfigure it. So the main idea on controller number one uh, in port number one, I've got the three SWA fans from that previous video. So I'm going to select that and down in the lower tab here, I just want to select what devices I have. Now, there's really no scroll bar here, but there are other devices over to the right here. What I have found is you can use your motherboard left and right keys, or you can just put your mouse cursor into this field down here and use your mouse wheel button. But we're going to select port number one here, and then this is where the SWA fans are located. So I'm just going to find SWA fan EX uh, here in the list. So right here, SWA fan EX RGB. And you can do a single one, but I actually have three of them attached. And if you recall from that video, these are modular fans, so they're all kind of connected in a daisy chain fashion. So let's go ahead and select that. Now, if you'll look here, it knows that this is a daisy chain system, so to speak. So it lights up three little selector boxes here. So I can select how many fans I have and I can check and uncheck these little boxes here. Now I have all three of them connected and it's the three front fans that you see in the video. Now, what you should see on your actual PC case when you select these is it should turn these lights red. And that's a way for you to just that's a way for you to just determine that you've got the right controller and the right object. So on the second controller, I've got the ring quad fans here, and I've got them on port one, two, and three. So we need to select each one individually. So we'll select port one. We're gonna go over and find ring quad on the list, and we're gonna select that. So number two, I've also got a ring quad. We're gonna select that there. Port number three, ring quad. And you can see that that fan is now red. So once you've got that configured properly, go ahead and hit the save button up here. And that just simply saves these pairings. Now you can reset the pairings if you change things, add things, move things, whatever. You can reset it. 
But go ahead and save that because uh, as I'll show you here in a minute, you're gonna tell TTRGB Plus to boot every time you start your computer. So we kind of want it to maintain these pairings. Now the next tab here, or the next sub tab I should say, right next to controller is TT Sync. Now what TT Sync is, is any other devices, you know, that aren't really a controller are gonna show up here. Now this could be third party devices that are supported in TT RGB Plus, or there'll be some other thermal take devices, I think like you know, mice and keyboards. So next we'll move over to the My PC main tab on the top. And this is just gonna give you some basic system information. Uh, there's nothing really earth shattering here. You just get some information about the processor you've got installed, your GPU, memory, uh, you might have some other information depending on what types of devices you have. Now, the next sub tab here is fan speed. This is going to be the tab where you're going to control your fan speed. So let's take a look at this really quick. You can see the fans that are installed here. I've got the SWA fan, uh, EX RGB, and three ring quad fans. What I have found is like the SWA fans are controlled as a whole. I can't really individually manage the speed on each one. Just kind of a bummer, but but you can see that denoted by controller one fan port one basically, and then for the ring quad we can see controller number two fan one two 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 three. So it gives you an idea. Basically, what you want to do is you obviously can see the current RPMs. I've got all of these at a hundred percent. So basically, we're just going to click on the advanced options button here to change it. Uh, now we've got normal. And from normal, we just get a simple slider button down to 0%. I don't think it actually shuts it off. It's just going to put it at its minimum RPM, you know, around 500. But we can then move it back up to 100, down to 0. We can just kind of manually change the fan speed. You can customize here, which means you can select silent, standard, performance, and full speed. And it does kind of put a template fan curve up here. Now, you can move the curve and customize it however you want and then use that particular fan curve. You can tell it what temperature sensor to choose. So system, CPU, or GPU, uh, whichever you want, whatever makes the most sense to you. And of course, each individual fan or fan group, you can change individually. Now this PWM button over here, it does have a slider bar over here for silent and performance. It doesn't actually change anything on the fan speeds, and I can't really find a whole lot of information as to what it does. And so I'm not sure exactly what will trigger that to change the fan speed, but it doesn't, to me, seem like it does anything. If anybody happens to know what that function actually does, I'm gonna use customize, set a custom fan curve to whatever I want, use profiles, and we're off to the races. So if you come back here, the other thing you can do is you can change the name of the fan. You just double click into this field and you can change it uh, to whatever you want. I'm just gonna put front fans because it's the front three fans. And then once you type it, you hit enter. It's just a way for you to quickly identify which fans are which. Okay, now we can go ahead and save that. So the next tab up at the top that we're interested in is lighting. Now let's go ahead and go over this. Now, obviously what we're looking at here is the sub tabs here are the different devices you have. So I have my SWA fan EX fans and I've got the ring quad fans and I can uh, click between those and it gives me a good representation of all of the different LEDs on each one. Moving over to the right, we have a group button here, which we'll talk about in just a second. This uh, where it says blue, these are different profiles that I have built and uh, we can select between those over here and even from the other screen we can select different profiles and then these little buttons over here are to manage your profiles we get a new profile button copy profile button edit profile button and delete the profile the next screen down where the model representation is uh, of the device that we're talking about so in this case we have three different swa fan ex's here uh, we get a representation of all three of those this is really kind of our selector screen and our preview screen. And of course, we can see it's controller 1-1. One, one. Of course, when you try to hover over it, it disappears, of course. And then we get a select all button. So the first tab I want to talk about real quick is the group tab. And I'll explain why, because I had a little bit of a problem with this. And it caused me a little bit of frustration at first. Now, obviously, when we see this group tab, it kind of clearly makes sense that you know, if we group all of these devices together, we want them to operate together. 
Now what I noticed initially is that I didn't have the SWA fan EXs selected, but I had the ring quad fan selected. Now in my opinion, this should cause it to act independently, but it doesn't. If I go ahead and if I select a new lighting sequence here on the SWA fan EXs, even though they're not in the group, it's gonna change it on the ring quad fans. And it took me a minute to realize, I couldn't figure out why it was doing that until I realized that I had this, uh, these ring quad fans in the group. So be aware of this, that if you're gonna change them all together and kinda you know, work with them together, then fine, have them all grouped. But otherwise you need to make sure that they're unchecked here in the group function. Now let's go ahead and uh, come down here on how you select different lights and change them. Now the, there's a couple of different ways to select uh, lights here. Select all, selects all the rings on all three fans, easy enough, okay? What wasn't clear to me at first is how do I unselect anything? And I don't know why on earth there is not an unselect button up here, or if I just click out here, why it wouldn't unselect itself. So, you know, if I click here to another fan or another ring, it selects it and I can kind of move around, but I can't ever just let go of it. I can't ever unselect anything. Now the button to unselect, if you take nothing else from this video, just remember that the cancel button down here is the unselect button. Okay. Now I guess it makes sense that cancel is kind of unselect, but it's not generally what we use cancel for. There's usually some other mechanism to unselect things. So again, that'd be something I'd take back to thermal take to change. Now, maybe it's just me. Maybe I should just give up the day job and go do something else. But select all selects all of the objects, all of the rings and all of the LEDs. You can, of course, select individual rings by themselves. That's easy enough. And then we can cancel that and unselect. Now, the third one, and this isn't intuitive at all to me, but if we click the TT center hub, it selects everything but only on that fan. Once you know it, it makes sense, but you know, there's really no indicator that that's what that does unless you happen to click on it and you recognize it. To assign a lighting sequence, and we'll keep it basic here, let's go ahead and unselect everything, and let's just take our top fan. So let's go ahead and click the TT logo in the middle. Okay, so now we've got our object selected. Now we're gonna come down to what effect we wanna to apply to it. So we'll leave it at static for now. But then the next important thing to take from this video is this color line here. So single means single color. So we're selected to blue, but if I collect, but if I click static and then I make sure that single is selected, then I can go ahead and click a color, you know, red, purple, blue, green, yellow, and it changes it. That's expected. Okay, and we, the direction and the light speed are for certain animations. We can change the direction they go and the light speed. And of course we can turn the light on and off here, but select your color. So we'll leave it purple and then we could apply it. All right, so we can go ahead and apply purple. Now it doesn't look super great on the video, uh, but you can see that it's, a, that it's a purple light. Now, if we wanna change it again, we can just go ahead and select it again and we can like put blue back, we can put green. You can see you get a good preview of here and we can apply it and then it changes it to yellow. We're good to go, makes sense. Now, if we wanna change just one of the rings, like say one of them, because at the end of the day, you can customize this quite a bit. There's quite a bit of work you can do in here. It seems a little simple and unintuitive at first, but you can go pretty deep in customizing this. And so we can just select the inner ring and same thing, we can just make sure static is selected, a single color, and then we can change the inner ring, let's say to red, and then we can apply that. Now we can go ahead and select the whole fan again, and we can change it back to just the blue, apply it, and we are good to go. Now over on the right, when we have single selected, we do get some quick selection keys for just some quick colors and we can drag these slider bars to you know, manually modify a specific color in there if we want. And we can adjust the brightness percentage up and down as well. So let's move on to what some of these other settings mean. So let's go ahead and click the whole fan and then the effect, let's say we want uh, stack, which is just kind of a, a stacking sequence. We've all seen that before. And if we go ahead and we can do a single color if we want of that, say we do red, 
and we apply that, we can see that red is stacking on that fan. Very simple, easy to do. Uh, the other thing we can do is if we go ahead and select all again, stack, now if we select random, turns it to gray here so there's not a color selected, does exactly what you think it should do. It's gonna stack to red and then it's going to change uh, the colors. So let's go ahead and select everything. We'll select heartbeat and we can select random and we can apply it and of course we get a random heartbeat on the fan all right so let's go ahead and select all and then we can select something in here uh, let's do let's do static again but let's do customize this will branch us into selecting individual leds so we can really kind of advance our customization of this so if we click customize here now what customize means is that you can customize the individual colors on the individual LEDs. That wasn't readily apparent to me at first. I kind of thought customize meant I had to do like something with this pattern over here. Because the way that you click and select individual LEDs kind of throws you off at first. So once you click customize, now we're red, let's go ahead and turn some of the LEDs blue. Now what we need to do is you need to click over here, but the first click just selects the ring. Okay, and then you have to click it again. Nope. See, this it's just, it's not intuitive. So let's click it back to red. Click customize again. Then click blue. Now click over here once it's selected. And then you can select individual LEDs. Okay. But I just occasionally have to fight it a little bit in the selection method to get it to let me do that. Now, if I click into the center ring, I can keep going, but the first click is going to select the ring. See, but then I have to remember to come down and click the customize button again. So we'll put them back to red because it like, it wants to put it back to where it goes. And just sometimes as you're clicking through here, it just, it trips you up is what it does. And anyway, it kind of frustrates you a little bit. Once you have it selected and previewed, then you can go ahead and apply it. And as you can see here, Let's change the individual LEDs on the next fan. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and select the inner ring. We're gonna select customize and let's change a few of them to green. So because it's already selected, we can come up here and change it to green and then we can go ahead and apply it. And of course we can see that that changes in the video. Now what I have found helps is to obviously make your selection first and just kind of move slow until you kind of get the hang of it and then static and then we wanna hit customize again select your color over here whatever you want it to be so let's select red and then we can come up here and do this and once you kind of get the hang of what you're doing here it's not too hard to kind of customize individual leds now you can start taking this a step further even though you know we've customized uh, some leds here you can go ahead and start like applying some other effects to it so we can select this outer ring we're going to slide assign blink to it and then we can go ahead and blink just that outer ring and it blinks it with the same sequence that we have. Of course, we can just move this around. We can put cross to it and we can apply that. And it keeps the, it keeps the LEDs that we've sent and then it starts applying these different functions to them. So basically kind of always do your selection, do your effect, and then the color, single, random. All right, so moving on, we can do the same thing with ring quad. Ring quads, just a lot more LEDs in it. You get four different rings, but you can set all of these up individually and do all sorts of fancy stuff. So you can set each ring individually. Uh, you can you know, set each LED to whatever you want, and then you can apply other effects to them. So for example, on this uh, ring quad here, we'll, uh, I've selected the inner ring, static, do a single color, we'll do uh, red, and then we'll apply that. And then the next ring will apply static single color. Let's put a purple. Okay, so we got purple out there. Then the next ring, we're gonna select that single color. Let's put yellow out there. And then we'll put yellow. And then we can do the last ring single color. And let's put, uh, well, let's just leave it at blue, I guess. So we can do that. And of course we can uh, then, let's select the inner ring. We can do customize. And let's put some yellow in here a little bit. 
Okay, and then we can change that up. Uh, that one's pretty, that one's dense enough that it's kind of hard to tell and it kind of mixes it a little bit. We'll do the out, uh, the, the outermost ring here. So it's just all blue. Let's put some yellow in there. Oh, I messed that up. So let's put blue back, click customize, yellow. And then we can apply that. And again, it's kind of hard to tell from the video, but uh, you know, just, just with the way that I've got that done. Of course, we could, you, you could do half and half. You could do whatever you want. You can split those all up any different way and then select it and start applying whatever sequence you want to that. And again, just remember, if you select the innermost, you can do all of it at once. If we assign blink to it, we can then blink the entire fan can blink just uh, individual rings. I don't think that you can blink individual pixels. The uh, other thing we want to talk about is uh, let's select all here. Let's apply. We'll make it all yellow. But if we select all and then we go customize, there's this pattern feature out here. So instead of selecting a color, we can select a pattern. Now we can create a new pattern. This is the, if you clicked at it, it gives you a drop down box of which patterns you have set, but we can create a new one. So if, if we add, it's going to create a new one and then we can change the color here. So we can put blue, we just click it and then click. So click the first box and click your color wheel and then click your second box out here and click another color. And then it just creates this gradient. Now you can add colors and you can kind of slide those around, just click and drag it. And we can keep, we can add another one and you can kind of just customize whatever you want. Once you have that pattern selected and you like the way that it is down here, we can go static. Let's select all static. And then instead of selecting a color, you can click over here and select the gradient easy enough. And then you can see it starts from the very top here and kind of rotates its way around. Then we can apply that to the light and everything looks good. So that's another thing that you can do. Of course, you can delete colors and you can get some customizability over everything. How the profiles work is that if you're on any profile and you make any changes, it just immediately gets stored into that profile. Now that includes the fan speeds as well. So you have to back up and go back to my PC, to my fans, and these speeds, if you're on the blue profile, for example, whatever speed you set here just immediately gets saved. I, there's a save button over here in the fan speed. So I think you do have to save it. But so for example, let's create a new profile. It just defaults to profile two. We'll click it and we can edit it. Let's just name it uh, hardware artisan, have hardware artisan. Now let's just make everything green, for example. So uh, let's go ahead and group everything this time. So it just changes it all at once. So uh, green will select all single color, we're going to do just a static green and then we will apply it. So now everything is green, of course. Now let's go ahead and back up to my PC fan speed. And let's say with green, everything gets full throttle. So we can select it here. So now we can go back into lighting and everything's green and everything should be full speed. And then of course we can put it back to blue, which is going to turn all the fans back off and just restore the colors that we have, but we can quickly get back there. Just click the profile and put it back to hardware artisan and you get the idea. Everything goes back to green. Everything's back to full speed. And of course we can copy that and delete it and edit it. But anytime you make a change in that profile, it's going to change it on that profile. So if you don't want to take changes with you, I'm not aware of a way to lock those profiles, which kind of sucks, but you know, just make sure that you copy those out maybe and uh, you know, just create whatever profiles you want. So anyways, that's probably the best way to do all of these is you're going to do customized work. Uh, just create a bunch of profiles with all the different fan speeds you want, the different lighting sequences you want. Uh, the other thing that's here is a settings button. 
And of course, general, we get language, temperature, sound, system, you know, whether to start it on startup or keep it minimized. Uh, location features, like on the LCD panel, it'll do weather and things like that. So you need to have some location information in it. Uh, it integrates with Razer Chroma. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this video today, but it does do that. Uh, there's a, a checkbox here for tough RAM, which means if your motherboard is going to control that RGB on that RAM, they want you to uncheck this. It looks like it's uh, unchecked by default. I don't have any tough RAM in here, so it doesn't matter, but that is a, that is a thing. You can create an account with uh, Thermal Take. Uh, it does have capabilities for voice with Amazon Alexa. Uh, there's a, a mobile app, it looks like, and I haven't tried any of those. My experience with some of that stuff is... You know, it's less than stellar. I, I really don't tend to mess with that kind of stuff too much. But the capability is there, it looks like, if you want to mess around with it. Uh, auto update is just what it says. It's going to update your uh, firmware and the software. And there's a simple about button. All right, well, there you have it. There's a general overview of the TT RGB Plus software. Uh, my honest opinion of it is, is it works. You can do some pretty cool customizations uh, with the lighting and things like that. So... It does work and gives you quite a bit of capability. Um, it's a little clunky in my opinion, and you know when you're first messing with it, the intuitiveness of it to me is just sorely lacking. So from that said, I don't. It's not my favorite piece of RGB software to use, unfortunately. Uh, I think there's some things they could do to make it a lot better, uh, because unlike most software, you can mess with individual RGB LEDs because these are premium products. You're paying you know a lot of money for them just like Corsair, more than Corsair in some cases. I just wish the, I wish the software was a little bit more up to date. Hopefully that's something that Thermal Tate can work on as they move down the road here. But that said, it's, uh, it's fully functional. It'll do what you need it to do. You can get some cool lighting effects out of it. And you know, again, the only other thing you can really control this with is Signal RGB. That's the only other thing I'm aware of. The only other piece of software, Open RGB possibly. These don't even have a motherboard sync cable in them to get them working in Corsair. You know, which is where I'd really use it if I uh, if it had that capability, but it doesn't. So, anyways, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about TT RGB Plus, I'd really love to hear about it. And if I can help, let me know. Try to get to those uh, the best I can. But that is going to do it for today. Thanks for watching.